Hi, I'm Andrew Murtnock with Harvest Automation, and today we're going to be going over the HV100 Preventative Maintenance Procedure. You can find the uh, procedure in the link below. This document is divided into three sections. The Operator Daily Inspection, the Robot Techni Technician Weekly Inspection, and the Robot Technician 500 Hour Inspection. The next chapter is the robot 500 hour inspection and maintenance procedure. These calibrations are necessary to make sure that the robot sensors are tuned and that the robot is operating at its optimal performance. Now just like the weekly inspection, uh, this should be performed by somebody with a service and maintenance background. Um, all of these steps can be performed by that person, but with the boundary calibration procedure, and if alignment is necessary, uh, please contact Harvest for support. The first thing we're going to do is fill out the top of the form. Again, we're going to fill it out with the robot name and serial number, the robot operating hours, the date that the inspection was done, and who was inspected by. So the first item is to go through the robot technician weekly inspection reports to make sure there's no trends or there's no repairs that are needed. So the next few items have to do with calibration. Now, before you do the calibration, it's important to make sure that the boundary sensor lenses and the sick lens is clean. Now to clean those, you're going to want to use the prescribed lens wipes. Um, you're also going to want to make sure that if you have pneumatic tires, the tires are fully inflated. They should be inflated to 21 PSI, plus or minus 1 PSI. If any of these things are off, it can throw off the calibrations. So you'll see the detailed procedure listed under each step, and they're going to be available on the Harvest Knowledge website. I'm not going to go through a detailed step-by-step for each procedure right now, but give you a general overview. So the first calibration you're going to perform is the wheel and sick yaw calibration. Now to do this, the robot's going to measure the tire diameter and it's going to measure the angle of the sick. Now it's going to use this information to create a lookup table that will allow the robot to perform accurately. The next calibration is the gyro calibration. Now to do this, the robot is going to look at the calibration fixture and rotate in both directions. It's going to create a table that um, corrects for the error in the gyro. There's no alignment for this. This is for a surface mounted component on the card cage. So the calibration is all that's necessary. The next calibration is the um, boundary sensor calibration. Now to do this, the robot is going to measure the alignment of the boundary sensors to see if they're in tolerance and to see if any adjustment is needed. Next, we're going to remove the wheels and clear away any ground cloth or debris that's in between the hub and the bearing housing. Um, now, the very first thing we're going to do when we do that is to tip the robot on its side. And uh, when we do that, we want to make sure that there's a soft piece of material like foam that's leaving the boundary sensor supported so that there's a gap between the boundary sensor and the bench that it's sitting on. It's important to do this because it will uh, keep the boundary sensors aligned, it'll keep the frame in good shape. Um, now to remove the wheel, you're going to refer to the documents that are listed uh, in this inspection, and uh, then you're going to inspect in here, and you're going to look, using a very fine pick, you're going to look for pieces of material, and you're going to pick out anything that's in between the hub and the bearing housing. Now, you're going to know when you're done when you can see a little bit of daylight in between those two pieces, and it's important to do this. Um, this material picks up dirt, and it can erode the seal on the bearings, uh, destroying the bearing eventually by letting foreign material in, which gets expensive. The last two items are uh, looking for faults in the fault log and uploading logs and BBRs. As with any step in this procedure, if there's a yes, make sure you note it in the column and put the notes below. Uh, if there is a fault on the fault log, make sure you download the logs and BBRs and then contact Harvest for support. So that's it for the robot 500 hour inspection and maintenance. I'm Andrew Murtnock and if you need any support, have any questions, please contact us at Harvest Support.